The room was silent, save for the rustle of fabric as I carefully folded my clothes into a suitcase. I was preparing for an overnight stay for my youngest brother's wedding, something I had been looking forward to for months. It had been a while since I had taken any time off, so this event was a welcome break from the monotony of daily life. The excitement of reuniting with my family and celebrating my brother's special day filled me with anticipation. As I zipped up my suitcase, I heard the familiar, sharp voice of my mother-in-law behind me. Never come back, and while you're at it, why don't you just get a divorce and leave, she spat, her words dripping with malice. I paused, her words cutting through the air like a knife. But instead of reacting, I turned to her with a calm smile. Sure, as you wish, I replied, my voice steady and composed. Her sneering face was the last thing I saw before I stepped out of the house. I had made up my mind a long time ago, and now there was no turning back. I took a deep breath as I walked toward the front door, whispering a quiet goodbye to the home that had seen so much of my life. Thank you for everything, I murmured, my voice barely audible. It had been a long journey, one filled with hardship, but also moments of joy and love. I pulled my suitcase along, the wheels clattering on the pavement, a sound that seemed to echo the finality of my decision. I was leaving behind not just a house, but a life, a life that had become unbearable. My mother-in-law didn't know it yet, but I was never coming back, at least not as the person she thought she knew. As I walked away, I felt a strange lightness in my chest, a sense of freedom that I hadn't felt in years. My thoughts drifted to the future, to the new life that awaited me. I would be staying at a hotel for the next few days, but after that, my destination was a closely guarded secret, one that my mother-in-law would never uncover. My name is Michelle Williams. I'm 53 years old, and I work part-time while also managing our busy household. My husband, Daniel, and I have been married for over 31 years, a union arranged by an acquaintance. Despite the circumstances of our marriage, we share similar values and have always gotten along well. Our only son, Adam, is the light of our lives. Daniel is a sailor, and his job often takes him away for long periods, sometimes over a year. Though it can be lonely, I've always been proud of his work. We live with my in-laws, a situation that, while practical, has its challenges, especially after the passing of my husband's grandmother, whom I cared for until her final days. Daniel's job, though important, left me to handle most of the household responsibilities, particularly caring for his grandmother. She was a kind woman, and in her younger days, she taught me how to manage the house, offering advice and support when I needed it most. Her passing marked the end of an era, and I couldn't help but feel nostalgic for those days, despite the burden of caregiving. But with her passing, the atmosphere in the house changed. My mother-in-law, who had once been somewhat cordial, became increasingly hostile. Her behavior was shocking. She began excluding me from family activities, deliberately bumping into me, and even making snide remarks about my cooking and cleaning. It was as if, with the burden of caregiving lifted, she had decided to direct all her pent-up frustrations at me. But the worst was yet to come. A few years ago, when Adam was just a boy, there was an incident that still haunts me. My mother-in-law filled his young mind with lies, telling him I was unfaithful, that I was planning to leave him and his father. The look on Adam's face when he told me what she had said still breaks my heart. He was just a child, unable to comprehend the complexities of adult relationships. I tried to comfort him, to reassure him that none of it was true, but the damage was done. When Daniel returned home from his voyage and heard what had happened, he was furious. He confronted his mother, demanding an explanation, but she merely sulked, dismissing her actions as a joke. From that day on, a rift began to form between Daniel and his mother, one that would only widen as the years went by. Now, with Daniel away at sea, my mother-in-law seemed to take full advantage of my vulnerability. She handed me complicated recipes, demanded I cook extravagant meals, and insisted on thorough cleaning, even inviting neighbors over and leaving me to clean up the mess. Her behavior became increasingly erratic, and I found myself growing more and more weary. 
One evening, after Adam had visited and gone back home, I started feeling unwell. My limbs were cold, my face flushed with heat, and I broke out in a sweat. It was another bout of menopause, something I had been dealing with for the past year. The symptoms were severe that day, and by evening I was too weak to even get out of bed. Just as I was drifting into a restless sleep, I heard the familiar, sharp footsteps of my mother-in-law approaching. She stormed into my room, demanding dinner, her voice like nails on a chalkboard. I barely had the strength to sit up, let alone prepare a meal. I think it's menopause, I managed to say, my voice weak and shaky. I can't do the housework today. Could you make dinner? For a moment, I thought she might understand, might show a shred of the compassion she had once had when she, too, suffered from menopause. But instead, she snorted in derision, turning a bag of snack crumbs over my head. The smell of crushed potatoes filled the room as the crumbs rained down on me, a shower of humiliation. Don't be lazy, she snapped, clicking her tongue in disapproval before leaving the room. I sat there in disbelief, crumbs clinging to my hair and clothes, too stunned to even react. How could someone be so cruel? My mind was reeling, not with anger, but with a sense of surreal disbelief. This was the moment I knew I had reached my limit. Half a year later, I stood in the same room, this time packing for my brother's wedding. It was a small ceremony, but one that would bring together our scattered family. I had taken the time to prepare meals for my in-laws in advance, knowing they would need them while I was away. As we sat down to dinner, I informed them of the arrangements. My father-in-law thanked me, but my mother-in-law, as usual, had something negative to say. Why are you even going to your brother's wedding? It's just a remarriage, isn't it? Probably nothing good. Her words stung, but I swallowed my pride and calmly corrected her. Actually, it's his first marriage. He's 33, and his partner is in her 20s. She scoffed, dismissing my explanation with a wave of her hand. How creepy, marrying someone so much younger. I finished my meal in silence, determined not to let her get to me. I had a bigger plan, one that she would never see coming. The next morning, as I walked out the door with my suitcase in hand, she hurled her final insult at me. Never come back, and while you're at it, why don't you just get a divorce and leave? I paused, her words echoing in my mind, then turned back to her with a smile. Yes, as you wish. I had already made up my mind, and her words only confirmed what I had been planning for months. I was leaving, and this time I wouldn't be coming back. As I walked away from the house, I felt a strange sense of peace. The burden of living under her roof, of enduring her cruelty, was finally lifting. I hurried to the station, eager to meet my family and begin the next chapter of my life. What my mother-in-law didn't know was that I had been in contact with Daniel, and we had agreed on the next steps. This wedding trip would mark the end of one life and the beginning of another. At the wedding, Daniel and I met in secret. He handed me the divorce papers, and together we signed them, marking the end of our 31-year marriage. It was a bittersweet moment, filled with both sadness and relief. We had been good partners, but the strain of his mother's behavior had finally taken its toll. I'm sorry, Michelle, Daniel said, his voice filled with regret. Don't be, I replied, squeezing his hand. You were a wonderful husband. Let's remain good friends. And with that, we parted ways, each of us ready to start anew. The day after the wedding, Daniel returned home alone. He explained the situation to his father, who was shocked but ultimately supportive. His mother, however, was not prepared for the consequences of her actions. Daniel's father, enraged by the way I had been treated, confronted his wife. How dare you drive out someone who cared for my mother until the end? You've been terrible at housework ever since you married into this family, and now you've driven out our daughter-in-law? It should have been you who left. His words were harsh, but they needed to be said. My mother-in-law, usually so confident and domineering, was left speechless, her face pale with fear. Within weeks, the decision was made. She would leave, and Daniel's father would divorce her. The tables had turned, and now she was the one facing an uncertain future. I returned to the house one last time to collect my belongings. My mother-in-law, 
now a shadow of her former self, knelt before me, begging for forgiveness. But it was too late. Her apologies were empty, and I had no intention of ever living under the same roof as her again. As I packed my things, she hurled insults at me, trying to provoke a reaction, but I remained calm, ignoring her outbursts. When I was finished, I turned to her with a final cold glance. I am no longer your daughter-in-law, and you are no longer my mother-in-law. Our relationship is over. With that, I walked out of the house for the last time, leaving her behind to face the consequences of her actions. Five years later, I am living a peaceful life in a small apartment with my cat. Daniel and I have remained friends, and we even go on dates when he is in town. It's a strange feeling, like we are rediscovering each other after all these years. My mother-in-law, now divorced and living alone, spends her days in solitude, her life a stark contrast to the one she once knew. It's ironic, really. She told me to leave, and now she's the one who can never come back. Life has a way of coming full circle. As I sit in my cozy apartment, sipping tea and watching the sunset, I can't help but feel a sense of satisfaction. I survived her cruelty, and in the end, I found my freedom. The future is uncertain, but for now, I am content. I have my peace, my freedom, and the love of my son and my friends. And that, I think, is more than enough.